Welcome to this video from the P-Way Engineer. In this video, we will be looking at the different parts of a rail. At the end of this video, you will be able to name all the different parts of a rail, and describe their functions. Let's get started. We will start at the top, with the head of the rail. The rail head is the top section of the rail on which the train wheels run. Its overall shape is designed to fit with the wheel profile, to provide good ride qualities, and minimize contact stresses. The shape also helps, when the rail is inclined at 120 as it is in the UK, to transmit the force down, through the center line of the rail, reducing the twisting effect that would occur if the force was closer to the edge. The head of the rail can be further split up into the crown, gauge corners, gauge faces and upper fishing surface. Let's look at these. The crown is the surface of the rail, when the track is straight and flat, that the wheel runs on. Next up, the gauge corner. This is the radiused corner of the head of the rail, that is on the inside of the track. This is close to the flange of the wheel. It is important to keep the wheel rail contact away from this area, to avoid wear on the rail. This wear can be in the form of gauge corner cracking, lipping or side wear. This brings up a point to note. You may come across the terms gate and field face. Let's take a second to explain them. Put simply, the gate face of the rail is the side facing into the center of the track, or forefoot. The field face is the side facing out. This could be towards the cess or an adjacent running line. Before we get back to the next part of the rail, can I please ask a favor? If you are finding this video useful please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This may grow the channel and keep producing videos. Thank you. Back to our rail. Next up is the gauge face. This is simply the flat straight edge of the head of the rail. This flat surface is where the track gauge the distance between the rails, is measured. 14 millimeters below the crown of the rail to be precise. Lastly on the head of the rail, is the upper fishing surface. It is often thought that the fish plates, used to connect rails together in jointed track, contact to the web of the rail. However, the fish plates are designed, so that only the surface at the top, and bottom of the plate contact the rail. Next, we move down the rail. Below the head of the rail, is the web. This is the thinnest part of the rail, that links the head and the foot. Within the web, the manufacturer will stamp or roll key information about the rail, such as it grade and year of manufacture. The web is also where holes for joints or bonds are drilled. At the bottom of the web, we move to the foot. Similar to the head of the rail, the foot is made up of a number of smaller parts. At the top of the foot, there is the lower fishing surface, where the bottom of any fish plates will contact the rail. Then comes the toe area. This area gives a surface for clips to secure against. The clips hold the rail to the housing and sleeper. This restraint stops the rail moving under the forces of passing trains. Lastly we come to the bottom of the rail foot. 
This large flat surface is critical to the overall construction of the rail. It distributes the load equally over the base plate in which it sits along with preventing rotation of rail that can be caused by lateral forces of passing trains. So, there we have the different parts of the rail. You can now talk about rails with a greater level detail, and can see that every part of the rail has its own function to perform. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, I hope you have found it useful. Please do not forget to give it a like and hit that subscribe button.